And it leads in quite nicely to some of the conversation that you've said there around one of the one of the main questions that I ask each guest is for you, if you were to advise a, an SME who's just starting out their own business right now, whether it's products or services, what's the one bit of marketing advice that, that you would give to them that will drive the most success for them in the coming years or keep them afloat at least? I think so. This is partly based on my own experience, but now as an independent advisor, I'm talking to a number of different businesses. And it's really about knowing who is your target customer, who's that target audience, and staying laser sharp in terms of trying to talk to that audience. There's a lot of talk at the moment. If I step back a little bit, um, so the world changed with COVID. People aren't in offices. It was hard enough to get, get past the receptionist to talk to somebody four years ago. People aren't in the office anymore. They don't go to events the same as they used to before. Getting to talk to the person, say, that right person is really hard. And therefore, there's lots of people selling marketing advice of here's how you create lots of content and send it to everybody. And it's all about scattergramming everything. And you basically lose, you lose sight of your own messaging and you lose sight of the target. So it's clearly, it's very different if you've got a large scale yeah, B2C business where everyone's a prospective customer or a B2B business where you're actually so supply pilot. We were trying to talk to the major retailers. There are only 10 in the UK, arguably not, maybe not in a suit tent. It's a short list. You, know, you don't need to be in every newspaper to talk to them because you know where they live. Kind of thing. Obsessed with the number of followers, the number of clicks, the number of views, because that's what all the tools are all set them up to do. So there's somebody I know on the sustainability front, they were really focused on saying to people, look, you, you need to truly do a life cycle analysis and truly understand the, the depth of where all the carbon is in your product. Then their marketing, they were getting to all sorts of issues and conversations with people around, let's comment on this packaging change, let's comment on this over here, which was actually fueling the, let's do little bits and pieces, let's just change the packaging, let's just do this. Because packaging is really easy for everyone's got packaging, so everyone talks about it. But your message just gets diluted and lost. Really make sure you know who your target is and put your effort into how do you speak to those people. And if it's really hard, then that's possibly good because it might, might be genuinely a blue ocean for you to go and find something that other people can't do. But if you don't do that, you also will never really know whether you're winning or losing. Yeah? You might have something your target audience don't want, but if you can speak to them, you can learn, you can evolve, etc. If you just get busy trying to say, I've got more clicks than everybody else on LinkedIn, TikTok, bar and this, et cetera, it's diluted. So apologies, that's quite a rambling answer, but it's just no, not at all. quite ironic given the advice is stay focused. It's a really rambling answer, but it's really understand who you want to talk to. And if I can go to a second one, I think, and with that, make sure your sales process is therefore fit for purpose. So again, there's lots of people selling Here's the, here's the fantastic sales model. Here's how it works, et cetera. Yeah, it's very different if you're trying to sell a widget for somebody to available, relevant to, I don't know, you know, every man over 40, you've got an audience of 10 million to go at. It's, it can be a very simple volume-based funnel. If you've got a complex SaaS sale, for example, then actually you're, you won't sell to one person. You're going to have to get multiple stakeholders. You need to make sure you know who the financial buying is, who this leader is, how do I take it to CTO? And therefore there's tools. So we adopted Miller Hyman, for example, in the last business as a way of reviewing those complex sales. Um, but it's making sure what you've got is appropriate for what you're trying to sell. Because sadly, there's rarely a quick fix. And that's, I think, why people get sucked into the numbers thing is, if I can throw enough mud on there, I'm going to get something. And not necessarily, you might just spend an awful lot of money marketing badly to lots of the wrong people. I think there's two things that probably clear of is one, people are there's there's so many things that into that a fair point. People are scared of talking to a, a, a very niche potential client base rather than their total possible market because they're worried that they'll lose customers who might hear their message, but it doesn't um, pertain well to them because they've been targeted specifically a really small niche customer section. 
and for those people who are worried about that, I, I've done both. I can promise you that, that talking to everyone, you are just shouting into the void and you'll get very little response back. You might get some response, but it won't. It'll be hard to work. It'll be hard to win. And the likelihood is it won't convert. When you start to get much more niche, and I'm still perfecting this, I'm still learning it, and it's never a finished process, the more niche you can be, the easier the conversations are when people do respond. And the more likely people are to respond because they feel like you're talking directly to them. And then I think the other side of things Absolutely. with that Absolutely. is... Well, 